we know that in if x is a real number that e to the power x can be represented by this series that is summation n 0 to infinity x to the power n by n factorial this is something that we all know that e to the this this, uh, this the summation of this series always converges to e to the power x now what i am doing is i am replacing this x by z so i can write e to the power z would be equal to summation n equals to 0 to infinity z to the power n by n factorial once again what I have done is I have replaced this x by z here and thus I have obtained that e to the power z can be always represented as summation n equals n may vary from 0 to infinity z to the power n by n factorial. Now by doing this one thing I am very sure of is this definition is in synchronization with the existing definition. Even if this z happens to be a real number we will get the same definition as of e to the power x because we have obtained this definition by lifting it from the previous definition of real numbers. Thus I can say that I can always represent e to the power z as the summation of this series. Now let us try to ex uh, let us try to expand this series. So what I have here is I can write e to the power z as summation n z to the power n upon n factorial where n will vary from 0 to infinity. Now I am replacing this z by 0 plus iota theta. This some complex number iota theta I am replacing this z by this and I am just trying to see what happens. So I can get what I will get is e to the power iota theta is equals to summation n will vary from 0 to infinity is e to iota theta to the power n upon n factorial. This can also be written as iota theta to the power 0 upon 0 factorial which is equals to 1 plus iota theta to the power 1 upon 1 factorial iota theta square by 2 factorial up to infinity. Now we all know that the odd powers of i always give us imaginary numbers and the even power of i always give, gives us real number because i square and i to the power 4 is minus 1 or 1 and uh, i to the power 1 or i cube is always i or minus i. So I am just uh, separating the real terms and the imaginary terms. What I get here is 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial plus theta to the power 4 by 4 factorial up to so on plus iota theta minus theta cube by 3 factorial plus theta to the power 5 by 5 factorial up to infinity. So here what I have got is I have got individually two infinite series one of the form 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial theta to the power 4 by 4 factorial infinity and another of the form of theta minus theta cube by 2 factorial plus theta to the 5 5 factorial up to infinity. When I observe these two infinite series very very keenly I see that these are nothing but the expansion of cos theta and sin theta because we always know that the expansion of cos theta is equals to 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial plus theta to the power 4 by 4 factorial and so on and sin theta is equals to theta minus theta cube by 3 factorial 
plus theta to the power 5 factorial and so on. So, I can write this that is a to the power iota theta as cos theta plus iota of sin theta. Now, I have obtained a very very important result here which says that e to the power iota theta is equals to cos theta plus iota of sin theta. Do you remember our first lecture we were when we were trying to solve this equation of the form y double dash plus y equals to 0 where y double dash for d square y by dx and we said that we already knew that this equation has two real roots of the form cos theta and sin theta because y double dash of cos theta was minus cos theta and similarly for y double dash of sin theta was minus sin theta. So, this turned out to be minus cos theta plus cos theta and this turned out to be minus sin theta plus sin theta. So, we said that this equation always had two real roots of the form cos theta and sin theta and when we solve this equation mechanically we obtain its two root as e to the power iota x and e to the power minus iota x. That time we were pre assuming that there must be some relation between e to the power iota x minus iota x and cos theta and sin theta and because we already knew that these were the real roots for this equation we said that iota must exist. Now what we have done is by expanding this equation and solving this completely we have identified this relation between cos theta sin theta and e to the power iota x and the relation is that e to the power iota theta is equals to cos theta plus iota of sin theta. So, somewhere or the other all the time when we try to solve the imaginary equations we always find out that these are not just imaginary numbers they always they always have some real world significance and we can always prove them even math mathematically. Now, let us try to represent this term cos theta plus iota sin theta on argon plane. So, we already know that cos theta plus iota sin theta on argon plane can always be represented by a complex number whose modulus is 1 and whose argument is theta. So, this is my complex number n z representing e to the power cos theta plus sin theta plus cos that is cos theta plus iota sin theta which is nothing but e to the power iota theta. So, I can say that e to the power iota theta on argon plane represents a complex number of modulus 1 and argument theta. Extending the same thing I can say that r into e to the power iota theta represents a complex number with modulus r and argument theta on my argon plane. You can write here is that z r into e to the power iota theta let us say iota phi for now because this is angle is even theta represents a complex number with angle phi and modulus r. We can even prove this by here if I get if I write r to the power e, e r into e to the power iota theta this is nothing but equals to r cos theta plus iota sin theta and you already seen this is the polar representation for a complex number with modulus r and argument theta. So, this is what we have even written here that r into e to the power iota theta represents a complex number with modulus r and argument phi. Thus, we have even in now we have invented a new way to represent a complex number on argon plane. So, till now we have seen three ways to represent a complex number. The first way was to represent a complex number in terms of its Cartesian coordinates of the form x plus iota y. This was the Cartesian representation of complex number. The second way which we saw 
was to represent a complex number using its polar coordinates where r was the modulus of the complex number and theta was the angle. The third way which we have found is in the term of exponential series where I can always write r cos theta plus iota sin theta in the form of r into e to the power iota theta. This way of representing complex number really helps us a lot in solving lots of mathematics or computation related to complex number. We can easily prove De Moff's theorem even by using this representation of complex number. Let us see how. Whatever De Moff's theorem used to state was that cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power n is equals to cos of n theta plus iota of sin n theta. I hope you all are clear. I hope you all remember this one. We have already solved, we have already even solved questions based on this. So now from this equation which we have just derived, we can always write cos theta plus iota sin theta as e to the power iota theta to the power n which is equals to e to the power iota n theta and again using the same equation we can write this as cos of n theta plus iota of sin n theta which is nothing but the proof of our De Moff's equation is really simple that uh, it is really simple to prove De, uh, to find the solution for De Moff's equation using this representation of e to the power iota theta. This is what I want to convey is that this representation of complex number is going to help us a lot in solving lots of problems related to complex number and it is going to help us not just in solving the problems related to complex number, it even helps us to visualize and even inference infer lots of physical problems related to complex number. We are going to see that in the coming lectures. Right now, let us try doing something. What I want to do is I want to find the log of a complex number. For example, I have a complex number z which is equal to x plus iota y. I want to find the log of this complex number. So what I have to basically find is log of z which is equals to log of x plus iota y. Now if I use the Cartesian representation of complex number in this case, I am sure I am going to land to lots of computation because I cannot simplify this thing. What I have to do is I just to the value of x plus and y here, I really do not know how you want to find the log of an imaginary number. So what we see is it is not really possible to solve this question using the Cartesian representation. Let us try the polar representation where we are having this equals to r of r cos theta plus iota sin theta. At max what I can do in this case is even I can write this as log of r plus log of cos theta plus iota sin theta. Now again what we will have to do is to, we have to we will have to substitute the value of theta and find this nothing of great advantage here. Now let us try our new representation that we have found is we can let us say this z is equals to r into e to the power iota theta where r is what the modulus of this complex number which in our case is under root of x square plus y square and theta is tan inverse y by x. So I say log of z would be equal to log of r into e to the power iota theta. I can always write this as log of r plus log of e to the power iota theta. Since log of a b is equal to log of a plus log of b, I can write this as log of r plus iota theta. Since we are taking log to the base e, so log of e to the power iota theta will turn out to be iota theta. 
I am substituting the value of r and theta here. So, this the equation turns out to be log of under root of x square plus y square plus iota theta. Now, under root of x square plus y square can be written as x square plus y square to the power 1 by 2, which can be written as half into log of x square plus y square plus iota plus iota theta. Now here it is really easy to find the value of log x square plus y square just by putting the value of x and y here. We can find the value of log x square plus y square because we already always know that since x and y are real numbers this term log x square plus y square is even going to be a real number and we already know how to find the log of a real number. So, using this exponential representation of a complex number we see how easy it becomes to find the logarithm of any complex number. This is the re this is the tremendous power of this representation of complex number. We will see some more ba application based upon it in our coming lectures. So, for now what we have seen is we can represent a complex number either by its Cartesian coordinates or by its polar coordinates or in the exponential form that we have seen just now. Now, let us hold this topic for some time and let us go back to our polar representation of complex number. We are going to again discuss this topic, but before that I want to I want I want to let you know something more interesting related to the polar representation of complex number. So, let us start. I have almost half erased my complex numbers here. Let me complete it. So, our complex numbers is complete. No, no, no. The topic is still remaining. So, the next topic that we are going to study is vector representation of complex number. So, when we were studying, uh, when we were uh, when we just started learning about the polar representation of complex number, we saw that we can always represent a complex number on a 2D plane and even th at that point of time we even saw that we can always represent a complex number even as a vector. Let us see how we can do that. It is draw a 2D plane once again and call the x axis as the real axis and the y axis as the imaginary axis. Now, I have a complex number z a plus iota b which I am representing by a point p on this plane. So, I can say that my complex number z is represented by op vector once again what I have done is I have, I have my this point p is representing my complex number z a plus iota b and since it is a vector representation I can even write it as z equals to a cap a into i cap plus iota b into j cap. Now, vector is always represented by two things. A vector is always defined by two things. First, its modulus and second, its direction. So, the modulus of this vector op, say modulus of op vector would be modulus of this z, which is equals to under root of x square plus y square, and the direction of op vector would be. this angle theta which is equals to 
tan inverse y by x. Now suppose I have one more point Q on this plane. This is my point P which was representing complex number z. Now I have one more point Q on this plane which is representing complex number z1 where z1 is something of the form a1 plus iota of b1. I am joining these two. This is point Q representing z1. So I can say OQ vector for this OQ vector the modulus of this OQ vector would be under root of a1 square plus b1 square and the direction of this OQ vector would be tan inverse b by a. Now what I have to find what I basically want to find here by this two vector is I want to find the definition of this pq vector. I can write pq vector as oq vector minus op vector. We know that op vector oq vector is represented by z1 and op vector is represented by z. So I can so now I can say is this pq vector is represented by OQ minus OP which is Z1 minus Z. So the modulus of PQ vector is going to be modulus of Z1 minus Z and the argument of PQ vector sorry since it is a vector we will say direction direction of PQ vector is argument of z1 minus z which in this case can even be written as argument of z1 minus argument of z and we can always solve this equation further. So this way we can represent we can find the vector representation of any complex number. Let us try our hands on this representation so that we can get comfortable with the vector even with the vector representation of complex number. So let us try to represent some complex number on polar on, on the argon plane. Let us start first with representing something like say let us first first start representing the addition of two complex number on argon plane. Uh, I suppose this is going to be really easy. Let us see how we can represent addition of two complex number. So I say we are representing addition of two complex numbers on argon plane in their vector representation addition of two complex numbers I am writing it as cn for now. So we again start with assuming two complex numbers z1 a1 plus iota b1 and z2 as a2 plus iota of b2. I always know that z1 z2 can be represented as a1 plus a2 times iota b1 plus b2. So what I have to do basically is I have to represent a complex number whose x coordinate real coordinates are a1 plus a2 and whose imaginary coordinates are b1 plus b2. Let us see how we can represent. Let us start again by drawing the polar plane on this polar plane this is my x axis the real axis this is my imaginary axis that is the y axis I represent a point I take a point P which is representing my complex number z1 and I take a point Q which is representing my complex number z2. What we have to represent is the summation of z1 plus z2. So if these would have been vector, uh, the, vector, uh, the vector representation of real numbers we always know 
that the summation of two uh, two vectors on a real plane can be on a 2d plane can be rep uh, represented can be represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram formed by them i'm i'm speaking once again if z1 and z2 would have been two real numbers of the form x comma y then we always know that the addition of two vectors on a 2d plane is represented by the diagonals or is represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram formed by them so i am i'm assuming that the same thing will apply even for complex number let us see let us try to prove that so i say i'm drawing a parallelogram uh uh my line is not straight actually it even doesn't doesn't represents a line even so i was telling this is my point q which is z2 and i'm forming a parallelogram here so let this be point r and based on my knowledge of real numbers i'm assuming that this r is going to represent z1 plus z2 let us try to prove this so what we have to basically do is we have to find the x and y coordinates of this point r let us draw perpendiculars from all these places on x and y plane let us call this as o this point as m this point as s this is p of z1 i have done a perpendicular here and i am calling this point as s for now okay so the x coordinate of r is equals to this distance and the y coordinate of r is equals to this distance now z1 i know i can say that this distance is equals to b1 because this is my point z1 and this represent is nothing but the y coordinate of z1 which in our case is b1 and similarly i can say the x coordinate of r would be this complete distance let us call this point a for now that is oa and i already know that this distance i'll represent this by some other color so i can say this distance would be equal to the x coordinate of z1 that is a and this coordinate distance is equal to the y coordinate of z1 that is b1 now let us try and observe these two triangles this triangle and this triangle i know since this is a parallelogram oq would be equal to pr since this is a parallelogram this angle would be equal to this angle and because it is a parallelogram and these two lines are parallel these this angle this is equals to this angle so i can easily say that my these two triangles are congruent i know by the diagram they don't seem to be but actually they are it's my bad i have not drawn the diagram very clearly and very legibly but just assume not just assume we have even proved that these two triangles are congruent so i can say this length would be equal to this length this length is nothing but the y coordinate of z2 which is p2 uh, and om is he going to be equal to this length which is nothing this is nothing but the x coordinate of z2 which is equals to a2 so i get this complete length as a1 plus a2 and this complete length as b1 plus b2 so i can now i'm sure that the x coordinate of r is a1 plus a2 and the y coordinate of r is b1 plus b2 thus we have proved that this point r has coordinates 
a1 plus a2 and b1 plus b2 and thus it represents this complex number a1 plus a2 plus iota b1 plus b2 which is nothing but the addition of z1 plus z2. Thus we have seen how we can represent addition of two complex number on an argon plane. I hope everyone is comfortable with this representation. Now after addition let us represent the something like the multiplication of two complex number. We have seen addition so I suppose uh, for you all representing subtraction of two complex number is going to be really easy. When we will when we will when we if you want to sub, uh, represent z1 minus z2 I know I can always represent subtraction in terms of addition so I can so I can write this as z1 plus of minus z2. We have already seen how we can represent the negation of any complex number that is if this is z on the complex plane then this point is going to represent minus z where this distance would be equal to this distance. Similar using that concept we can represent z1 minus z2. I will leave this as an exercise for you all to represent z1 minus z2. I hope no one is going to face any problem related to this because this, this is really simple. This is the, just the extension of what we have already done here while representing the addition of two complex numbers z1 plus z2. Now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to represent multiplication of two complex numbers. So I am erasing a addition from here and what we are going to write is multiplication of two complex numbers. We are going to represent this on the argon plane. So now in this case I am assuming two numbers in polar forms because we have already seen that multiplying two numbers in polar form is really easy. So if I have two complex number of the form r1 theta 1 and r2 theta 2 uh, uh, then their multiplication can be always represented as r1 r2 theta 1 plus theta 2. This is what you have seen that is we have to find on the argon plane we have to find a complex number whose modulus is r1 r2 and whose argument is theta 1 plus theta 2. So let us start representing this. I will even ask you guys to start solving this simultaneously with me uh, so that even uh, you guys can try your hands on solving this problem or else let us try do uh, let us do one thing. Why do not you try uh, guys try solving this and after 5 minutes we will start we will solve this together. I hope no, no one is going to face problem with this one because we have already represented lots of complex number on argon plane. We all, uh, just to give you hints um, or may, not hint even a starting point we can represent r1 theta 1 by a point with modulus r1 and angle theta 1 and r2 theta 2 by a point with modulus r2 and angle theta 2. Now in order to represent this what we will need is a complex number with modulus r1 r2 and angle theta 1 plus theta 2. You just guys, you just solve by that time I am just drawing a diagram for representing this. I am not solving I am just drawing my normal plane and everything you guys start solving the question. And I hope no one is going to face problem with this one. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone is solving. Is everyone comfortable solving the question? Any doubts? So, 
I think everyone has solved and even I have drawn not the complete solution I just represented P and Q P by Z, uh, Z1 representing point P and Z2 representing point 2 uh, Q on this plane. So uh, this is my origin O I know that this length OP would be equal to R1 and this angle is theta 1 this length OQ is R2 and this angle is theta 2. Now what we have to do is we have to find a complex number with argument theta 1 plus theta 2. So let us draw a line which has an angle of theta 1 plus theta 2. I think everyone would have done the same for representing an angle with argument theta 1 plus theta 2. plus theta 2. Now on this line we have to find a point R such that OR would be equal to R1 into R2. So what I am done, what I have done here is I uh, maybe you would have followed a different approach and I am not telling that is wrong and this is just my approach to solve the question or maybe an easier one to solve the question. So let us take a point A on x axis such that this length OA is equals to 1. And uh, let us do one more thing. Like this, I am drawing, I am taking a point R on this line such that this angle OQR. Just a second. I am drawing, taking a point R on this line such that this angle OQR is equal to this angle OAP. Once again what I have done is on this line which has an argument of theta 1 plus theta 2 I have taken a I have drawn an angle I have taken a point R such that this angle OQR is equals to angle OAP. Now let us consider these two triangles O P A and triangle O R Q. This is my point R, whose modulus we do not know, and whose angle is theta 1 plus theta 2. So, on this and considering this triangle ORQ and OPA. PA. We know that in these two triangles, this triangle angle POA is theta 1 and this angle is even theta 1. Then we have drawn this triangle or taken this point R in such a way that this angle OAP is equals to angle OQR. So by using A similarity, I can say that these two triangles are similar. Once again, we know that these two angles are theta 1, theta 1 and we have draw, taken R in such a way that this two angles are equal. So I can say my triangle ORQ and triangle OPA are similar. So using the similarity property, I can always write that OA upon OQ would be equal to OP upon OR where O A is 1, OP is R1, OQ is R2. So substituting their values here what I will get OA represents oh, sorry OR is equals to R1 into R2. See from here what we will get is OR equals to OP into OQ divided by OA. OA is 1. OP, and OP into OQ is R1 into R2. So what we have got is this point R which was having an argument of theta 1 plus theta 2 has a modulus of R1 comma R1 into R2. So we have represented a, we have found a point R on R1 plane such that its modulus is R1 into R2. And its argument is theta 1 plus theta 2 which that is we have represented this number on complex plane which is nothing 
by the multiplication of r1 into r2 so the next thing that i want you guys to try is to find the division of two complex number that is find a complex number with modulus r1 by r2 and argument theta1 minus theta2 uh, it, the problem is going to be same as this one just that the argument in this case will be theta1 minus theta2 and the modulus would be r1 r1 divided by r2 i suppose this is going to be an easy one i leave this as a homework assignment for you all and i think after solving this and the addition of complex number we will not face any problem in finding the division or subtraction of two complex number in case you have we'll discuss the same thing in our next lecture but for now i'm erasing this and i'm leaving that as an assignment for you all